Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Miller, and I am the Global Head of Creative Strategy at Snapchat. I'm excited to welcome you today to our session on crafting brand messaging during a global crisis. I will be your captain today as we navigate these waters. Let me introduce you to our other officers on board. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a creative strategist on our Global Solutions team, and these are my work from home coworkers. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. I'm a creative strategist out of New York. Um, I have moved back in with my parents. I'm wearing my mom's sweatshirt, and I'm here with my work from home coworker, Eddie. Say hello. Hi, my name is Jeff, and I'm a creative strategist in LA, and these are my work from home coworkers. Beyond our new coworkers, Ben, Jacqueline, and I have the great fortune to represent a team of talented strategists, producers, and designers from across the globe. The Creative Strategy Team is here to help brands and campaigns to build thoughtful, creative across the Snapchat ad format family. Let's talk about why we're here today. First and foremost, we wanna shed light on our community, how their behaviors have changed, and how we as Snapchat have responded. Secondly, we want to show how brands and consumers are reacting. There are already some really thoughtful, best-in-class examples from across categories. Third, we want to really reinforce that we're here to help. We know that this new territory is unknown for everybody. We believe that with brands and agencies coming together with us as a creative strategy team, we can really create thoughtful executions that will resonate with the Snapchat audience. Before we get going, we thought it was really important to take a step back to really reinforce what's different about Snapchat versus other platforms. First and foremost, it's the fact that Snapchat isn't about capturing that perfect moment. It's not about social status or trying to gain likes or a broad audience. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's about communicating with the full range of human emotions to do so in a really expressive way and ultimately for a close set of friends and family. What we know behaviorally is that talking with pictures is fundamentally different than talking through text. It's more expressive, it's faster. And on Snapchat, because we open up to the camera, it's a lot easier. It's an ingrained behavior for our audience. That's why we have today 229 million daily active users on the platform. And they're not just checking the app once a day. In fact, they're spending 30 plus minutes a day on average. And when you think about that in the context of creation, that means they're creating over 4 billion snaps every single day on average. That makes Snapchat one of the most used cameras in the world. Our audience pre-COVID was using the Snapchat camera to make plans, to explore the world around them, and mostly to spend time with friends and family. Now in this new environment, instead of making plans, they're making adjustments. Instead of exploring the world around them, they're sharing their point of view from their own home. But there's still plenty of opportunity to share funny moments in terms of connecting with close friends and family. Let me hand it over to Ben's clone and he can provide more insight in terms of how our audience and their behavior has changed. Thanks, Jeff. Today, I want to talk about the changing behaviors we're seeing among Snapchatters as a result of the rapidly changing situation we all find ourselves in. I think it's really important to first acknowledge that COVID-19 has impacted brands and consumers in a multitude of unprecedented ways. While there are many unknowns and we certainly don't have all the answers, I think a good place to start is to look at how Snapchatters have changed their own behaviors on our service since the onset of the pandemic. As Jeff touched on earlier, we've seen a dramatic shift in the types of conversations Snapchatters are having. Here you can see some of the most mentioned words and top trends from Snapchat search, public snaps, and our story submissions right as the pandemic began to take hold in the US. Terms such as coughing, social distancing, school and hand sanitizer bubbled to the top. And I think it's important to understand the context and how these terms came to life. Knowing that over 60% of our users are creating snaps daily these conversations are being held amongst close friends and family who are sharing their experience of the pandemic through our camera. And as we begin to think about how brands can communicate with their consumers, I think this context becomes incredibly important. 
we really want to try and understand sort of what Snapchatters are talking about so that we can understand where brands have a role to play that feels authentic, that feels additive to the overall experience, as opposed to feeling invasive. In a survey of Snapchat users in the US, we were able to see how Snapchatters are adapting to the new reality of life at home. Rather unsurprisingly, 88% of Snapchatters are finding that the virus impacts their daily life. And 74% agree that they are adjusting to a new normal. Interestingly, Snapchatters over the age of 35 are feeling the most disrupted with 92% of them acknowledging that their day-to-day -day routines have been impacted. I think we can all resonate with this at least a little bit. And I think it, it helps ground us in the types of snaps that people are starting to create and send. And I think we're all sort of in this environment where, you know, whether we're trying to transform our living rooms into gyms, uh, whether we're putting up or, or really just enjoying our new work from home coworkers, we all understand sort of the new realities that, that we're faced with. Uh, and I think thinking about those realities really allows us to, to A, understand what consumers are creating, but once we know that, to really figure out sort of what consumers want to engage with. And I think while people are spending more and more time at home, the need for real connection is more important than ever before. We've seen this reflected by a sharp increase in group activities across chat, calling, and snap games. And communication with friends increased by over 30% in the last week of March alone, with more than a 50% increase in some of the geographies that have been most impacted by COVID-19. These communication behaviors e eclipse even the individual peaks we see during major holidays as more and more people are sheltering in place around the world. And as a platform built for real friends and open communication, the value of our service is more evident now than ever before. And as we think about what matters most to consumers during these times, I think the opportunity to connect with people they care about is something that we really are seeing resonate across the board and something that I think brands can start thinking strategically about as well. Augmented reality is one of the core ways that our consumers express themselves and connect with their friends and family. We've seen augmented reality play an increased role in the life of Snapchatters during the pandemic. As a tool for communication, creativity, and exploration, augmented reality has seen heightened usage across the platform for both organic and sponsored lens experiences. In general, over 75% of our community engages with lens AR experiences every day. And in late March, we saw a 37% increase in snaps sent with a lens compared to late February. From a purely branded perspective, we've also seen an 18% increase in sponsored lens playtime. Consumers are clearly looking for ways to engage and interact with content in the comfort of their homes, and AR is a great outlet for that. As we think about brands and how they can start connecting with consumers, we think about providing interactive and engaging augmented reality experiences to bring brand stories into a user's home and give that user a new and innovative way to interact with the brand story. The magic of lenses has also been brought into your desktop through Snap Camera, a desktop app which allows people to add our entire suite of lenses to whichever video service they use. As people have turned to video conferencing and live streaming to connect with friends and family, we've seen more than a 30x increase in the daily downloads of Snap Camera. This is an amazingly fun tool to stay connected with the people that matter most to you. All of this is powered by our platform for creators called Lens Studio, which is a free and open software for making AR lenses. At the end of Q1, over 900,000 lenses had been created by our community through Lens Studio, up from over 700,000 at the end of Q4 of last year. We have already seen our amazing community of creators use Lens Studio to develop experiences that educate, entertain, and inspire and we recommend that brands think about how to use this canvas to deliver their message as well. As we talk about strategies for brands to use to connect with consumers during these challenging times, I think it only makes sense to talk a little bit about how we at Snapchat have been connecting with our own user base since the beginning of this pandemic. In order to try and educate, inspire, and even entertain during these times, we've been working with internal and external partners to bring a range of content to our user base. Through creative tools like Bitmojis, stickers, and filters, we're reminding our community about the importance of washing your hands and keeping your distance. And we're empowering them to tell stories that relate back to those needs. To ensure Snapchatters have all the latest information from the experts themselves, we've partnered with the likes of the World Health Organization who publishes regular updates from their official account. We've also worked with their team to develop custom video content to answer questions from the Snapchat community. Our own news team is also regularly producing coverage and continuously updating it with tips and information about COVID-19. And our team also fast-tracked the launch of our Here For You channel, 
to prioritize a dedicated search tool for those seeking the latest advice from organizations like the NHS and CDC. So we talked before about how Snapchat behavior has changed and how consumers are, are changing the type of content uh, that they're creating and sharing with their friends and family. And so one of our focuses as a platform has really been to provide consumers with organic creative tools that allow them to tell those unique stories. And so what you can see here are just some great examples of the tools that we've created to help empower communication on our platform. So on the left side, you're seeing a filter that really leans into social distancing and allows a consumer to show sort of how they've been social distancing during the pandemic. This is a great example because it's using some of our smart technology to bring in the consumer's name into the experience to help make it feel like it's really, really personal uh, and make it feel that much more unique to the individual Snapchatter. And then on the right side, you're seeing one of my favorite lens experiences that actually uses some of our newest sky segmentation technology uh, to actually allow people to show love and respect for what's happening in Italy. And these are just two of the many ways that we've brought and used creative tools to our community to really help empower that communication and empower their stories that they're trying to tell through this challenging time. The camera can be an amazing tool for self-expression, but it can also be an incredible canvas for education. These examples from the World Health Organization show how we've used both filters and lenses to do some of that really important education. On the left side, you can see a really simple filter that provides five tips in stopping the spread of coronavirus, something that people can easily apply to their SNAP and send out to their friends and family to disseminate really important information. And on the right side, you can see this amazing augmented reality experience that used our newest marker technology that has the camera actually recognize currencies from around the world to launch these different animations that explain what your donation could go to. So an amazing AR experience that allows consumers to engage and interact with the World Health Organization, get new information, and then from that experience immediately drive to a, to a page where they could actually donate to support. And now I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic to Jacqueline to talk a little bit about the strategies we see for brands and, and the role that they can play during this time. Thanks so much, Ben. So every single brand right now is impacted by this and is wondering, is there a role for us to play? And high level, the answer is yes, but it needs to be approached in a thoughtful and appropriate way. And it really all starts with being authentic. So when we look at authenticity being key right now, in order to present as so, we're seeing brands strategically pivot from things like product benefit towards consumer benefit, moving away from hard selling towards offering utility, changing broad messaging to be more empathetic messaging, and finally, reviewing original media strategies and pivoting those approaches to leverage new behaviors and opportunities. So I want to take you through a variety of strategies that we've identified as being both impactful yet appropriate for the times that we're all collectively experiencing. So strategy number one is communicate your corporate social responsibility. This is a great opportunity to increase brand love by educating Snapchatters on how your brand initiatives are aligned with their values during this time. So how is your brand participating in this global fight? Are you manufacturing PPE? Are you donating space for temporary hospitals? Are you providing free deliveries on essentials like food and pharmaceuticals? These are all things that would be really beneficial to communicate to your audience. Um, here's an example from Uber Eats, uh, and this is all around supporting their local uh, or support local business efforts. They are here advertising that there's a $0 delivery fee for all local restaurants. And they also pair this with a lens, which allows for Snapchatters to tell their own supporting local story. So not only do you have the brand voice talking about supporting local, you have users being brought into the conversation through the camera. Strategy number two is let them know that you're there. You can really help reduce anxiety and panic while instilling a sense of normal by letting customers know that your goods and services are still available. So think about what customers need right now. Is it upgraded technology or Wi-Fi to support human connection through video calls? Is it entertainment to help provide an escape? Uh, perhaps it's ingredients to cook at home for themselves and their families. 
How do your goods and your services help customers adjust to this new reality with comfort and with ease? Um, identify this and tell this story. This is a great example from AT&T talking about how they are helping people stay connected. Moving on, um, strategy number three is all about communicating your adjusted offerings. So right now, every single person is making adjustments to their regular ways, and this is inclusive of brands. So take this time to communicate the specific changes your brand has made to ensure your offerings are safe and appropriate given the times. So for example, uh, this is a really great example of this from Bumble, uh, and Bumble has added a virtual video date feature to their app, um, and they've told the story of this new off offering through story ads. So all in all, a really great example of both identifying the adjusted offering, communicating it to the audience, and also, if you see in this final frame here, suggestions of how users can actually incorporate this feature into their own dating, such as make it a game night. So really great example of communicating your adjusting adjusted offerings. All right, so strategy number four is raise awareness that you're hiring. Uh, unfortunately, unemployment is at an all-time high, and so if your organization is currently hiring, it's a great time to raise awareness of that. Um, and you can also look at increasing your volume of mobile applications by actually linking the application to our video ad units. Be sure to communicate details around what's top of mind for individuals that are currently considering new work, things like flexible hours, competitive, competitive salaries, health benefits, et cetera. Um, this is a really great example that is live from Papa John's. If you're into driving and dollars and pizza and getting paid daily, well, we should talk. Hit jobs.papajohns.com to apply. Strategy number five is stay in your lane. It's really important right now for brands to know their role and lean into what they do best. Uh, make sure that you are speaking to what you know and avoid the pitfalls of piling into the conversation without adding any value. Really, it's an opportunity for a brand to step up and use the power and the place that they have within their culture for good, but make sure that you're not overreaching. Um, here's a great example from Nike talking about taking their world that they are very much an authority in, the world of fitness and movement, and bringing that inside. And then a final strategy is lean into the current opportunities. Um, we, as the Snapchat team, are here to keep you up to date on the unique business opportunities that we're seeing on the platform. Uh, with an increased usage of the platform and heightened engagement of specific tools and features, there are a lot of interesting insights that we can provide you and your team with. Uh, a great example of this uh, can be seen with the Face Jar campaign, uh, and they leaned into the growing trend of desktop augmented reality through our Snap Camera tool. And what they actually did was create a lens that acts like a virtual swear jar. But instead of every time you swear, it's every time you touch your face, which I do way too many times a day. Uh, every single time you touch your face, you're actually charged $1. Um, and at the end of that use of the lens, that amount of money that you've racked up can be put towards a donation that goes towards COVID-19 protective gear. Here's a short little video that actually talks about this uh, this campaign. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. But if you do, at least 
Awesome. And finally, to wrap up these strategies, I also want to balance out the suggested strategies with some marketing watchouts and things to ensure that your brand messaging is resonating as intended. So first is avoid messaging that can be misconstrued as opportunistic. Be sure to acknowledge the new reality of your customer's journey. Adapt your tone of voice to show empathy towards the current reality. Uh, ensure that you're following through on any campaign promises. And if you join the conversation, make sure that you're adding value. So we've talked about these strategies, and I hope that you're feeling empowered and informed in regards to figuring out your own brand strategy approach during this global pandemic. But I also want to talk about some really great campaigns that can be used as inspiration for success. So let's take a look at some of the best in class examples that we've seen so far. This first example is from PNG. So Procter and Gamble quickly and powerfully leaned into the conversation around what it means for parents during COVID-19. These simple filters and lenses that Pampers developed weren't about using never before and seen technology, but they were more about leading with the customer. It's about being relevant and helping parents talk about the amazing and challenging reality of working, parenting, and teaching from home. So here's just a quick snapshot of a variety of filters from the Pampers campaign. And moving on from parenting at home, talking about teaching at home, Google has launched a great campaign to celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week. So Google has uh, run both video ads and static uh, image ads to both thank teachers and link to their Teach From Home resources, which provide tools and tips for anyone that is now teaching from home. Uh, These spots perfectly capture the challenges that parents around the world are feeling with this new responsibility of being a teacher. And so they ran a variety of video and static assets to get their message out using various formats. So let's take a look at these. Tyson, eyes on the book, please. First word, two sounds. Tyson. Moving on to uh, this great campaign from Dove, during the COVID crisis, social media platforms have been seeing a groundswell of selfies posted by frontline workers, proudly showing off the marks on their faces from long hours that they spend wearing masks. And of course, ever the advocate for real beauty, Dove felt compelled to share these images with the masses through commercials, highlighting the sacrifice that healthcare professionals are making every day while celebrating the beauty of their courage. And all three of these have the same audio, so I'm gonna play them at the same time, but if we just look at the images themselves are extremely profound. A really impactful way of pairing very strong imagery with succinct copy and powerful audio. And moving on to Adidas, uh, Adidas had an entire home team campaign, which was all about encouraging people to stay home. The campaign included snap ads and story ads, which feature Adidas brand ambassadors like Jonah Hill. And uh, they're all talking about how they're spending their time at home. Um, Let's take a look at these snap ads and uh, the story ad of Jonah Hill and how he is keeping creative from the inside. What's up, my Adidas family, my home team? Voilà, des choses que vous pouvez, que vous pouvez faire chez vous. There are so many things that you can teach yourself on the internet. Love to y'all. What's up, my Adidas family, my home team? I am spending this time creating. I see all of the music producers got their big fancy studios making beats. My weapons of choice are very simple. Note card, pen, cardboard. Thoughts. That's it. I am writing movies during this time. So I'm rewriting a movie now and we have it boarded out into the three acts of a film. Act one, act two, 
act three. And then we got my favorite part, which is the flavor bin, which is where you take all of your crazy ideas, you put them on the flavor bin and you see where they fit within your story. I want us all to use this time to make stuff. Let's make stuff and come out of this with a big supply of art and creation. All right, love to you all, bye. And Adidas rounded out this campaign with both a home team filter and home team lens so that Snapchatters could actually tell their own home team creation story. So now I'm going to pass it back over to Jeff and he's going to take us through a few more inspiring uh, COVID related campaigns and uh, take us into our Q&A session. All right, Jeff, over to you. Thanks, Jacqueline. Trolls World Tour is my favorite example for how to respond within this new environment. This film was originally scheduled for theatrical release, but became the first major picture to release directly on digital demand. We partnered closely with Universal, the studio behind the film, to not only raise awareness about this change in distribution strategy across video, AR, and our filter ad formats, but also to bring to life a really amazing snap camera integration. So for Zoom calls or Hangouts or while streaming, people could turn into their favorite trolls directly through a Snapchat camera. This was the little piece of joy that the Snapchat community needed exactly at that moment. Another campaign that really was thoughtful about how they messaged in an authentic way was for the NFL draft. The NFL league itself partnered with us closely to find essential workers that were super pumped about the draft and really wanted to celebrate their teams and share who they wanted that magic pick to be. What up world? Joe, registered nurse, Philly. Birds need a receiver, like four. Hi, I'm Dr. Mo Byrne, a diehard Jets fan from Long Island, New York. For draft day, I hope the Jets pad that O-line to protect that pocket all the way to the postseason. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Hey, my name is Jerry from Los Angeles, California. I help with the transportation of medical equipment, and I'm a huge Chargers fan. I'm predicting they're going to take Tua because we need ourselves a good quarterback. Hey, I'm Bates. I'm an e-commerce worker here in Kansas City. I'm a huge fan of the world champion Chiefs. I hope we trade up and select Henry Ruggs III in the NFL draft. Hey, my name is Jimmy. I'm a diehard Rams fan. With the 52nd pick of this year's draft, I hope we get an explosive offensive player. My name is Ashley, and I'm a travel nurse currently in Los Angeles. This year, I predict the New York Giants will draft Tristan Wirfs because they have to protect Danny Dimes and Saquon. Our Snapchat creative strategy team was able to turn around that from a brief to final execution in two days. Super great work by the team. Another example that makes me really proud is our collaboration with the artist Damien Hirst in support of Partners in Health, the global health organization. We wanted to showcase that people could be incredibly creative even while at home. What makes this campaign particularly successful in my mind was that it was originally intended to be a physical activation and quickly the team adapted to make it something that everyone across the globe could interact with directly from home. My inspiration for Spin Out came from a summer fete I went to when I was about six or seven years old at my school and it, they had like a, a fruit crate where they'd put a little motor in the middle of it and uh, with a little platform on it. And they had little postcards and you'd bulldog clip them on and squirt tubes of paint at it. Absolutely, like you couldn't drag me away, I loved it. It's so great to be doing this um, spin out project with Partners in Health and Snapchat. I mean, Partners in Health are so brilliant. They're doing an amazing COVID-19 project with, uh, you know, for a lot of countries all over the world. It's just an amazing charity. I'm really, really pr proud and pleased to be supporting them. I love Snapchat. I'm totally pleased with my new filter. I can't believe how well it's turned out. Anyone can make a spin painting now. And this is just like really simple on your phone and it reaches millions of people. Creativity inspiring people across the globe to take action. This experience itself was created in the outward facing world camera and it gave you the ability to select your color, from a color spectrum. And once you created your masterpiece, you were able to save it and pin it 
virtually on the wall, wherever you may live. Incredible project, thanks to the partnership with Damien and Partners in Health. So let's close with a few key recommendations. First, regardless of the platform, this isn't true of even just Snapchat. It's really anywhere you're advertising this moment. Be authentic, have a point of view. Don't speak in platitudes or in generalities. Speak in your authentic brand voice. Second, be thoughtful. Thoughtful about your tone, about your timing. Not everything has to be serious, but it has to come from a place of great intent. And third, and perhaps most importantly, be proactive. This isn't a time to be passive, to sit this one out. It's a time to have a really clear voice in market that really not only speaks to a community, but is really conscious of what your brand stands for. This is what we've seen happen effectively already on our platform. And we really encourage our advertising partners to continue to lean into video, to think about ways that they can connect through the camera that are very specific to the moment. And third, to provide new experiences, experiences that a couple of months ago would have not even felt very relevant, but in now feel incredibly inspirational. Our commitment to you is that we're gonna be with you every step of the way, from campaign ideation, through remote creative production that can happen in real time, and then ultimately coming from a place of humility and collaboration in a true, genuine partnership. Thank you for your time today, and we now open up the floor to any questions you may have. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining today. My name is Emma Liebman and I'm on the brand marketing team. First and foremost, I wanna say that we will be posting this recording on our For Business site on the COVID section and we'll also be emailing it after today's session. I'd also now like to reintroduce our panelists. We have Jeff Miller, Global Head of Creative Strategy, Jacqueline Sikoros and Ben Feuerstein, Senior Creative Strategist. We are so excited today to dive deep into your questions that you've been asking, not only today, but before this session. We have the answers that you have been dying to know and we're really excited to dive in. So let's get started. First and foremost, how is coronavirus, coronavirus impacting marketing performance on Snapchat? Thanks Emma, I'll jump in on this one. I just wanna say thank you for organizing this and thank you everybody for spending time with us. I'm excited to dive in on these, these conversations and these questions and, and hope to make this as informative as possible for you guys. Um, so it's a great question and thinking about sort of marketing performance in general, we've talked a lot about the changing behaviors that we're seeing in market. Um, obviously, people are spending way more time on, on digital channels. I think Business Insider came out with numbers that U.S. consumers are spending uh, one to two more hours uh, now on social media, um, and some are even spending two plus hours or more on social media. Um, so just an incredible amount of engagement, which I think means an incredible amount of opportunity. Um, and when we think about Snapchat specifically, um, we're seeing increased performance. We're seeing um, a 36% 36, 36 increase in install volume um, for app ads, a 19% increase in swipe up rate overall um, during late March, um, and an 18% increase in lens playtime um, as well. That's sponsored lens playtime. So we're seeing a huge opportunity um, in terms of increased performance, uh, but also just in sort of environmental changes uh, that brands can really take advantage of. Great. Uh, the next question is really kind of understanding like what consumers are interested in, what Snapchat is interested in. So what are Snapchatters interested in now? Has that changed during the virus outbreak and how can brands react to that? Jacqueline, perhaps you can take that. Hey guys, um, thanks for this question. So in regards to how behavior within the Snapchat community has changed, um, our consumer insights team is doing regular surveys of our users to get a sense of what that looks like. So from some of our most recent data, um, what we're finding is that with the extended time that they're spending at home, um, they're actually shifting that to be uh, spending that time to look after themselves and look after their living spaces. So a few stats to share, we're seeing 54% of them are cleaning and organizing more. 
Uh, 41% are practicing self-care, 30% are exercising, 27% um, are learning a new skill like cooking or painting, and there is definitely a growing trend where 12% uh, are doing puzzles, so lots of, lots of fan, fan favorites around the puzzles. Um, in regards to a specific demo, uh, teens are actually staying the most active from what we're seeing, and this is both in terms of physical and mental activity. 41% uh, of them said that they are exercising more, and this actually is higher than any other age group. And 41% of them said that they're learning a new skill. And we're seeing those manifest uh, through exploring hobbies like interior decorating and crafts, and also online meditation services have been seeing increases in activity. Great, yeah, thanks. A lot of information there to dive in. Um, if you're looking for those stats again, those can be found on our core business site. Um, for more information um, and to, re to reference those. But uh, leaning into that, people are very interested in how our ad receptivity has been on the platform. Are Snapchat is engaging with the brands that they're seeing, the ads that they're seeing? Um, ben, perhaps you can take that? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question. So we, uh, in, in terms of re receptivity, we talked a little bit about sort of the, imp the improvement in performance metrics that we're seeing across the board in terms of engagement. Uh, but there's also a recent Kantar study that we're super excited about um, that shows that 77% of Gen Zers and 70% of Millennials um, are actually receptive to Snapchat advertising versus 22% and 38% of general online video ads. Um, and anecdotally, I think this comes from sort of how engaging the ad units are and the idea that, that consumers can really be part of ad experiences on Snapchat. When you think about things like lenses and, and filters um, and even sort of the engaging you know, video content on the platform, um, it's really an opportunity for, for brands to, to speak with consumers as opposed to just speaking at consumers. Um, and I think that's why we're seeing, A, the affinity towards Snapchat ad products, but also this increased engagement at a time when people are just using the platform more and more. Great. Uh, so Jeff, this question is for you. They are very interested in how the Trolls campaign came to life and if there's any learning for advertisers who are interested in leaning into a space like that, but have only really activated on a mobile phone and not the desktop. So we're looking for learnings and best practices. Sure. So what makes Trolls so unique was that it was the first major film to be released directly on digital demand when it was originally planned for a theatrical release. So there's a lot of uh, press out there about uh, how successful they were able to, uh, to make that transition. And one of the things we really focused on with Universal was ensuring that we were taking full advantage of our entire family of ad formats. And then also thinking about ways of how families would be actually engaging with the film in a given time frame. So first and foremost, what Universal did exceptionally well was they were driving very clear awareness of that change in distribution strategy using our formats like commercials, the four, six second view, as well as our snap ads and story ads uh, to make sure that the family audience really understood when the film would debut and how to access it across a video on demand. Then they use AR in, in, to drive further engagement uh, lower in the funnel. AR on Snapchat is such a natural way for a film like Trolls that has such strong IP to be able to tap into this community of, of passionate fans. So not only were people able to use the troll lenses on Snapchat itself, but on the weekend of release, it was really important that we really tapped in this moment when collectively across the globe, people were really feeding for this type of family content. So by making uh, the trolls uh, characters available within Snap Camera, we really leaned into not only something that was great for the film, but also something that was really genuinely impactful for the Snapchat community. This is the type of content that really aligned with what they were looking for at that given moment. So the big advice from the campaign is that number one, really lean into the full suite of ad formats across both video and AR to drive really efficient reach, but also great engagement within your target audience. That applies to all advertisers in any context. But I think in particular, when you have really strong IP, especially something connected to a cultural moment, find new ways to really organically connect within the Snapchat community and looking at the behaviors that they're already adopting themselves. And in this case for trolls, Snapcam was that perfect alignment. Great, and in that similar vein, we've got a bunch of questions about product mixes, how to manage that. There are so many different ways to activate on Snapchat and really across the board. 
Um, and people are really wondering, are there any suggestions of product makers on Snapchat to stay effective in such a volatile time? Um, and if those recommendations have changed over time, perhaps Jacqueline, you can take that as I know you've worked on a bunch of campaigns lately that have had a smattering of different um, objectives and of course products integ integrated. Yeah, for sure. Um, so ultimately when we're looking at product mix suggestion on Snapchat, uh, as a creative strategist, I will always come back to the client or the agency I'm working with and say, what is your KPI? Because that ultimately will, you know, dictate what that recommendation is, but super, super high level. We're looking at product mix and Jeff hinted at this earlier in regards to content consumption, as well as engagement with augmented reality in the camera. We're seeing increased content consumption right now, and we're also seeing an increase in conversations between best friends. And so as an advertiser, I would say it's a great strategy to have a mix of video where it's an opportunity for a brand to tell their brand message and camera tools like filters and lenses where you can integrate in a meaningful way into the conversations that users are having or provide them through AR with new experiences. Uh, we're all experiencing the monotony of like the day to day of being at home and this this um, this isolation and augmented reality can actually provide a really interesting escape and new experience to users. Um, and specifically when we're looking at pairing AR with your video strategy, um, as Jeff mentioned, it's an incredible way to increase your impact. Um, we actually did a study where we looked at 80 campaigns that had snap ads and lenses as part of the product mix. Um, and the campaigns that added AR to their video ads actually saw an increase in reach of their campaign by 31%. Um, and they saw a two time higher ad effectiveness uh, through brands studies that were attached to these. So if you can add in camera tools to your existing video strategy, um, I think that's a really great uh, way of sort of looking at how you want to approach your product mix on Snapchat at this time. That's great. And we actually just got a question that I think can ex we can expand on is, um, are there opportunities for camera tools and AR to, di to directly drive conversions? And I think you spoke a little bit about that. Maybe you can speak specifically about driving purchases and those lower funnel objectives. Yeah, so I'm a big believer that AR can be used for any element of your marketing funnel that you're trying to target. Um, and within um, the last, like, I think two years, we introduced a lens attachment tool within the AR experience. So you can link out to things like a long form video to an app install um, right from that lens experience. So absolutely AR can be used for DR. Um, and if this is something that you're interested in, um, the creative strategy team Team, we often work directly with our clients to advise on how we should build out that AR experience so that it really does drive a user to take action and makes it feel like a connected experience both between the lens itself as well as the attachment being provided. Awesome. And so shifting gears, uh, we've gotten some questions on how to create ads in a time when you're not with your agency, you're not really able to shoot outside. Um, and we know, they know that we've been putting out things like Snap Publisher and really wanna just kind of discuss how brands and agencies can use that, how to activate with that um, and any learnings that you can give to people who may not have played around in that space before. Um, ben, do you think that you can kind of start giving an overview of what that looks like? Yeah, of course. And I love that question because uh, I think it really taps into the creative element of Snapchat and, and thinking really strategically about how to bring, bring creative to life. And I think now that we're, we can't all be together, we can't all be in offices, that can seem you know, particularly daunting. Um, and one of the things that I'm really proud of at Snap is that we've built some pretty amazing tools to make this process really, really easy for people. Um, so we have a tool called Snap Publisher, which is a tool that um, allows you to really quickly and easily um, build amazing video, app, video units. Um, and you can uh, build those sort of off of our best practices according to the KPI you're trying to achieve. Um, so there's a whole bunch of resources within that tool that basically show you, depending on what you're trying to do with that piece of video content, what the best format um, for that creative to, to, to really live in um, should look like. Um, and it's an amazingly uh, easy tool to, to just get used to and, and start getting a really good understanding of, of sort of how Snap video content can come to life, um, as well as just using it to, to take the assets that you have on hand um, and start creating a whole bunch of different um, creative from, from that um, really quickly and easily. Uh, the other tool uh, that is uh, relatively new is a tool called Lens Web Builder. 
um, which is an amazing tool that uh, people can tap into to use thousands and thousands of pre-existing um, augmented reality objects that we've built out on the platform. Um, and this tool allows you to go in and actually start combining those different objects and building out uh, your own custom AR experiences without needing any 3D modeling or animation experience. Um, it's a really self-explanatory tool that allows you a whole bunch of fun and exploring all the different uh, things that, that we've built out organically on the platform, uh, but also allows you to really quickly create AR experiences for brands. Um, and so I highly recommend you check that out. Um, I think specifically for creative agencies, it's a, it's a great opportunity to just start getting really comfortable with, with the, the kind of content we have on the platform um, and get a really good understanding of, of how AR from the web, the web builder standpoint and then video from the, the Snap Publisher standpoint can come to life. Great. And going back to um, performance and seeing how Snapchatters are engaging on the platform, uh, we got a question about Snapchatters purchase behavior. And I know we hit a little bit of that earlier, but to just reinforce and um, have a deeper understanding of how Snapchatters are purchasing, have they been swiping up on ads, really thinking about those lower funnel objectives and if Snapchatters are thinking about ads um, and the uh, brands that they're seeing and taking that next step. Yeah, great question. I mean, I think as we touched on, there's been a ton of just incremental engagement across the platform. I think from an ad performance standpoint, we've seen an increase of 36% of actual install volume for app ads, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and then we've seen a 19% actual increase in that swipe up rate. So when a user sees a snap ad and then actually swipes up on that snap ad to engage deeper. Um, so I think those are some great directional numbers to just show that people are more engaged with the platform, more engaged with advertising on the platform. And I think the unique opportunity and, and the challenge here, quite candidly, um, is that because people are more engaged, because people are spending more time on, on digital channels, um, they're a little bit more saturated with the types of experiences that, that they're being exposed to. So I think this comes back to the strategies that Jacqueline talked about earlier um, in, in really trying to be authentic and, and really trying to use user behavior to tap into these experiences and get user attention because there's a huge opportunity um, to, bril to build brand affinity and, and drive some of those lower funnel metrics. Great, and really talking about Snapchatters, we got a question about what are competitive edges when we're looking at those younger generation. And when we're looking at Gen Z and the, those stakeholders, um, I'm gonna take this question is that we really kind of own that space. We reach two times as many 13 to 17 year olds than Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger combined. We reach 90% of 13 to 24 year olds in the US and 75% of 13 to 34 year olds. Uh, we really just are engaging with that community so well. And the reason for that is people are looking for a way to communicate with their best friends and family. And we see that Gen Z's are really leaning into that. Um, I know for myself, I'm a millennial, but that doesn't mean that I'm not taking pictures day in and day out of myself, whether that's waking up early morning to take my dog out, um, even with, you know, as you saw earlier in Jeff's presentation, taking a snap, a funny snap, if Ben's uh, image froze on the screen, Snapchat is really about those moments in between the moments, which is why it's so valuable to reach those, those members and that community um, on Snapchat. And it's not just about the camera, it's kind of all of the different products that we spoke about today, whether that be video or Discover or Lens, there's a unique opportunity to reach people um, throughout their day, whatever they're doing. So I think that we've got a couple questions on that, but I really just wanted to hit that home as we know that that's such a valuable audience um, for each and every one of you today. Um, Zooming out and kind of shifting gears entirely, we've got a question and Jeff, this, I think you're the best person to speak about is um, what does creative strategy do and what kind of projects do you guys work on? Great question. So we have a creative strategy team that's located across all of our key global markets. And our number one remit is to help to educate advertisers and agencies in developing the best in class uh, campaigns on mobile, full stop. And when we talk about best in class creative, we're not just talking about creative that resonates culturally or, or talking about awards that we could potentially win together. But more than that, what we're really focused on is really understanding our clients' business objectives from the top of the funnel all the way down to the, the most concrete performance objectives. And really understanding the fact that creative in many ways is the biggest determinant of, of success or failure uh, on our platform or on any other platform. And so what we are really focused on is helping clients and agencies to understand what works best on the Snapchat platform, both across video and AR, 
and to very humbly collaborate with those agencies and clients to help them drive success. So what you can always expect when you work with the creative strategy team is that we're going to come to the table with great curiosity about your client objectives, about your consumer, uh, great humility, not under, us presuming to understand uh, what those are, uh, but also great confidence in knowing what works best on the Snapchat platform. So that's where we've seen great success is where we have very trusted and authentic relationships, where we have the ability to educate our partners on what works well and that we're in a room together with no ego, with the opportunity to build something special together. Speaking of building something special, uh, we got a question about how brands are driving um, and making aware of their, their customers of physical locations opening back up or the ability to deliver, um, whether that be food, uh, athleisure, wear, like whatever that may be, and kind of thinking about have you seen different strategies taking place when it specifically comes to messaging? I think we spoke a little bit about those um, in our presentation, but wondering about anything that you see on your side that we didn't touch on today. So to me, the key first and foremost is understanding who your audience is and what their state of mind is and what their benefits that they could see potentially from you as a brand. So we did cover several great examples of this, but I think the ones that have really resonated to me are the ones that are speaking from an authentic voice. They're not speaking in platitudes about in these uncertain times where it starts to turn into white noise. Instead, they're being very specific about the value that they can provide to, to their advertisers. So if that's food delivery, being very clear that there's the opportunity for uh, contactless delivery. And just stating that up front, tone of course matters, but ultimately what we know our community wants is just clarity, clarity on, on what the benefit is, uh, clarity on, on how brands are adding value in the current environment and doing it in a genuine versus opportunistic way. So more advice than anything I, I would say is just to be specific, uh, be clearly connected to your brand voice and how it's adapted in this environment um, and ultimately be true to your value proposition. And when measuring success, uh, a lot of brands are very much interested in having measurement studies attached to their campaigns. Um, and one question we got is how do you kind of look at creative messaging at the upfront when we know that there's going to be a study tied to it, whether that be brand lift, um, incre incremental lift, whatever that may be. So perhaps Ben, you can take that question, just really thinking about from the onset, how we look at measurement and creative together. Yeah, it's a great question and, and something that we always want to think really strategically about. I think when possible, we always recommend tying some sort of measurement. We always want to be proving out sort of the effectiveness of our campaigns and our creative. I think, as Jeff said, sort of the, the, the success that we see on the platform, and I imagine this is true across platforms, is really fundamentally driven by creative. Um, and so when we're going into that creative process, we want to know up front sort of what measurement uh, we're, we're actually looking at and, and what are the KPIs associated with that campaign so we can actually build the creative to reach those objectives as opposed to putting a campaign out there and then just waiting to see what the, the measurement results are. We really want to think strategically about what that measurement is um, ahead of time, you know, whether that's a, 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 a sort of a, a larger brand study or whether that's a, you know, an MMM model, whatever it is. Um, we really want to know going into those campaigns uh, what, what the creative should be speaking to so that we can hit on all of those objectives. And a follow up to that is when you're thinking about AR and video and you have a, you know, a smorgasbord, if you will, of different creative tools, how do you think about the measurement and messaging at that point? Are you thinking about it differently? Are you having different messaging for each? Um, I guess just kind of focusing there um, when you know that you're going to have a different product mixes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we want to have consistency across across the different products, but I think we also want to recognize the different roles that each product can play um, throughout the, the campaign cycle. Um, if you think about something like AR and actually putting a consumer into that experience, um, the messaging there can, can feel very much like it's first person and, and coming from the consumer. And you want to think about the behavior that they're having when they're sort of becoming your brand ambassador and sharing that with your friends versus the message that you're going to put on a video unit um, that is really the, the brand speaking to a consumer. Um, so, so there is a slight difference there, but I think it fundamentally comes back to understanding, okay, what are we measuring? What are we trying to achieve? And how do we develop consistency um, across the creative and, and how different people on the platform are going to be exposed to, to that uh, brand campaign? Great, thank you. Um, we have two more questions. One of them is about Discover, which we really haven't spoken about at length today. 
Um, we have a question about how you can align your brand and video ads within Discover content um, and aligning with brand messaging. Um, we recently heard, and this is quote unquote, we recently heard that shows were doing well on Snapchat and we're looking to invest more. Can you give strategies or tips of, of what has worked in the past? Jeff, sure. perhaps that you're the best one for that. I'd be to jump in here. So what's uh, really amazing to see is how our Snapchat shows have really taken off in terms of the depth of engagement. And I think that really speaks to, again, the, the behavior that's been established within Snapchat. Uh, we really, over the years, have built this, this trained understanding within our audience to be able to not only to be uh, messaging in a very expressive way uh, through our camera and, and to do that with close friends and family, but to also expect highly curated content from premium publishers and from original programming that we produce ourselves. And so as a great example, one uh, show that uh, I'm really proud of is a show called Endless, uh, which is following the, the lives of young people in Southern California. Uh, that's a program that we really lean into in the most recent season with a brand partner named, uh, named Lays, a PepsiCo company. And so what we were able to first identify with Lays is first in general, looking at our, our discoverable con content, which is reaching, oh, has already reached over half of the US Gen Z audience, full stop, the entire Gen Z audience within the US. Uh, Endless specifically had 38 million total unique viewers over the first two seasons, 38 million. Think about that in the context of, of broadcast uh, programs in, in the States or any other market. So Lays really saw that there was an opportunity that they could align very closely uh, with this program in particular. And so what they did is we partnered with them directly to think about in integrations within the show. But I think what was even more important was that they were creating custom commercials that would run adjacent to the show. It starred Dylan, one of the, the leads of this program itself. So if you were watching season three of Endless, you had a really cohesive experience where you would see occasionally Lays being integrated within the show itself. And then the commercials themselves would actually be featuring Dylan and talking about the, the Lays product. So that to me is the, the one that took the most preparation, but also is the most thoughtful execution on one of our hit shows. But really brands don't need to make it uh, something that is so uh, high functioning, highly complex. Instead, what we really encourage them to do is just to lean into our video formats that run naturally within our Discover content. So within shows, we have a highly efficient commercial ad format that is a forced view for six seconds with the ability to run even longer content within it. And what we see are incredibly efficient rates in terms of the cost for completed views. So we're really encouraging brand advertisers of all types to be leaning into our premium content that appears on Discover, whether that's our original shows or through our premium publishers. And to, in doing so, take advantage of the great value they can find in our video ad formats like commercials and 